It's seven oh one. We call the regular meeting board of selectmen to order. Um, I do have two added agenda items. Um, I'd like to add under um, oops, uh, both under new business. They'd be agenda items G and H. Uh, agenda item G would be uh, FY twenty three supporting arts grant. Um, that's a grant that the town received from TECD. And then what would be H? Uh, would be discussion of the budget letter parameters. Um, can I have that motion, please? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Yes. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, I'd also like to. Uh, for the for the record, note that we will be holding on agenda items eight D and nine A. Uh, we're still waiting on additional information necessary for that. I have a, a motion to postpone those two items, please. I'll move we postpone agenda items eight A discussion when we're home eight D. Oh, I'm sorry, eight and nine A. Oh, nine A. I'm sorry. Um, eight D and nine A discussion of permit length proposal for development of land use and nine A. Town property inventory through the Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, I think that brings us to the regular course. We are going to take a couple of things out of order, though, for scheduling purposes. But I want to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance and I'll add Fletcher Nordell. Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. All members of the board of selectmen are here present. Um, we're going to do something a little bit out of the normal course of order tonight. Um, I want to recognize a young man uh, whose dad brought this to my attention, um, and it is it is a really cool story. Um, so I've got uh, just a couple of comments I want to make, and then uh, we'll bring. Young Mr. Arts and his family up for a presentation and some photos. But um, Kyle Arts is a local 13 year old boy who is in his second year participating in the October Saves charity fundraising. In his first year working for this great cause, Kyle raised $2,100 for, for cancer research. This is, um, this is what the description of his donation page had to say. I'm going to read it verbatim before moving on. Um, I'm excited to join this. Is, these are Kyle's words. I'm excited to join this incredible initiative. This organization's mission is very important to me, and I'm proud to help them make a difference. My journey against cancer started when I was a very young man. I lost my meme to pancreatic cancer. This year, I once again play for my two biggest fans. Kathy is my neighbor at camp, and she beat breast cancer and is an inspiration to all. As sad as it is, I lost a great friend to cancer this year. Jeff fought a great fight and gave it his all. He, would, he always gave me support and motivation, and he will never be forgotten. Please support me by giving to my page. Every dollar counts. So this year, his second year participating in October Saves, he raised through his donors an average of $34.41 per save. Kyle made 244 saves during that period of time and raised $8,396 for beneficiaries such as the Dana Farber Cancer Institute, the Inova Shar Cancer Institute, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and more. That total of 8,396 raised is amazing by itself. But it gets even more amazing when you realize that October Saves across North America raised $610,000 this year. What that means is that Kyle's contribution is the highest of any participant in Connecticut, the fifth highest of any participant in the country, and his work equates to just shy of 1.5% of the total amount raised by this organization in North America. That is really remarkable. We're all very proud of you. So with that, on behalf of the town of East Windsor and the Board of Select, and I have a proclamation I'd like to present to you. Um, if you want to come up and bring your parents, I and mean, if you guys want to do photos, this is this is kind of the informal portion of our meeting. So please, if you if anybody wants to come up and join him or take photos, please feel free to do that. So this is a proclamation for the, for the town of East Windsor, and it says as follows. Whereas in 2020, nearly 2 million people will be diagnosed with cancer in the United States. And whereas cancer caused 17.8% of all deaths in the United States in the year 2020. 
whereas October Saves is an international 501c3 charitable organization whose purpose is to raise money for the fight against cancer. Whereas Kyle Arts was the top fundraiser for October Saves in Connecticut in 2022, raising $8,396. And whereas Mr. Arch was also the fifth highest fundraiser for the organization in the entire country in that same period of time. Now, therefore, the town of East Windsor congratulates Kyle Arts for his dedication, kindness, and accomplishment through his participation in October Saves. And furthermore, be it hereby known to all that Kyle Arts has made the entire East Windsor community proud of the good work that he has done in the fight to combat cancer. Given the 17th day of November 2022, we are sincerely proud of you. It's like a clock in hippie, doesn't it? Yeah. If anybody else wants to vote us, please, this is, we'll, we'll take a couple minutes. Uh, Seven nights. What they want to do. I don't know. <laughs> I went to the screen of the camera. <laughs> so, does anybody want to get photos? Yeah. Good. <laughs> oh, <it's not> <laughs> and then I want to invite the, the select them to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, it's a board. You guys, you want to come up? You guys, no, you guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. really great job. There you go. All right, wait, I'm changed. I didn't know we were having a guest. So I'm changed. <laughs> Marie, don't hide. Alan, <laughs> you guys move back. Marie's trying to hide behind you. I changed on it. Didn't know we were having a box. Okay. No, no. He wasn't yeah. trying. Look, look at the time Jerry's wearing. I mean, come on. Exactly. All right, one more. All right, that should give you enough to choose. Okay. 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 Very good. So it's good every once in a while to make sure we're doing something that reminds you that there's a whole lot of good in the world and a whole lot of good right here in our community. And I know, thank you for that reminder. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll move on to public participation. Uh, is there anybody here in the room who would like to address members of the public? So please state your name and your address. And once we're done with that, I'll turn to anybody who's online. Is there anybody here present who would like to address the board? Okay. Is there anybody online who would like to address the board of selectmen? Okay. Uh, there will be another opportunity later on. Um, our next item of business. So what I'd like to do is take up agenda item 6A and agenda item, let me find it, uh, 9B together. Um, they both pertain to the Stiles Bridge replacement project. And uh, Mr. Ludwig Pulaski from the DOT is here with us. Um, and he can explain what it is we're looking at, uh, what the proposal is. And um, then I'll talk a little bit about what our next steps are in terms of potentially moving forward. So Ludwig, thank you for taking the time to be here. Um, floor is yours. We've got you on the big screen. Um, yes, thank you for Selectman Bowza and uh, East Windsor Select Board. I truly appreciate the invitation um, to come forward and discuss this project with you um, to replace the bridge on 191 over the Scantic River. Um, I think I had sent an offer uh, to you on October 27th for $2,100. Um, the one thing, and I think I'd talked to you about this for Selectman Bowser, was that money has to be um, uh, used for the public trust according to Connecticut General Statutes 3 125 and 47 2. And I think you and I had already talked about that. Um, the department, as part of the bridge um, replacement, uh, requires a 1,287 square foot, what we call a fee taking. That means that 
um, that would be a portion of land that the part the department would retain as part of the uh, the new right of way, and then we also will, for the duration of the project, need require a nine thousand one hundred and ninety eight square foot construction easement. Uh, I think if you look on the map that was in the packet, that tells exactly what the construction easement. Uh, is for, I could read it off, but it's kind of long. Uh, after the, um, the department is completed with the project, uh, that particular area, I believe, is going to be graded and seeded according to the landscaping plan. That's sort of the, that's the Cliff Notes version, and I'm certainly open to any questions about the acquisition anybody has one of the things that um is so so just for the edification of board members and the community um this is a, a land transaction between town and the state in order to do that we need to refer this to the planning and zoning commission for an 824 referral it needs to come back from pvc and then we need to send it to a town meeting um but in the interim one of the things that um Mr. Pulaski had offered to do was actually to walk the site with us if anybody wanted to actually see what we were talking about, but it's at the bottom of Old Ellington Road on the left hand side. Um, and what they need is this the uh, land that he's just describing as part of the swing space and storage area for the replacement of the bridge. The left hand side coming up from the south bridge or the left hand side going down? Going down. Yep. Yeah, the town was deeded a piece of property. Uh, um, by some people, uh, and I'm not sure what that was all about. There is currently, apparently, looks like there's some farming on the on the property, as well as there is a driveway way there. And I'm not sure if your uh, Department of Public Works is using that or not. It, that's not us. Okay. All right. So any questions or comments? I had questions on the first day, but that ain't the time. Um, so I would like to take uh, Ludwig up on his offer to go and, and walk the site and kind of see see what they're talking about. Um, he and I can, can coordinate offline. Uh, and if you guys want to share with me sometimes, that would be better or or that would work for you, I can make sure that we coordinate with them so we can, anybody who wants to take a walk. Um, in the meantime, if you guys don't have objections, what I would ask is that we do a referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission under ES 8-4 um, so that we can start that process and meet his deadline, which is hopefully completing this by the end of the year. Uh, yeah, it's an 824 request. Make a motion to allow the uh, uh, first lesson to the 824 referral. 824 referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission um, in regards to um, the acquisition of possibly um, like Is there a second? Second. Made and second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So, um, Ludwig, maybe we can touch base either tomorrow or by email and you can send me some dates that will work for you. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much uh, I let me know and I'll do everything I can to clear my schedule. Um, the department wants to convey that we want to do everything to work with the town and make this as seamless a, a project as possible. So, at least in terms of the acquisition. Um, so yeah, let me know what works best uh, for you and your board and I'll do what I can to uh, accommodate that request. Fair enough, thank you, sir. All right. So I can go now? Yep, yep. you, you may go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. And you guys all have a great night. You too. You too. Yep. Okay, that brings us to uh, reappointments. Um, there was an error in the uh, agenda. Mark Simmons is in fact a Republican uh, and he is a member of the Housing Authority whose term is up. Um, I hold Mark in very high esteem and uh, would be delighted to see him continue to serve on the Housing Authority. 
Um, may I have a motion? I'll move to reappoint Mark Sibbins as a regular member to the Housing Authority for a term expiring December 1st, 2027. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. He was reappointed. And Len Morton as the hearing officer of towing and pounding of towing and pounding vehicles. Make a motion that we appoint Len Norton, hearing officer of towing and pounding vehicles, as a regular member for term expiring November 5th, 2023. Is there a second? Second. second. Made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Uh, okay, new appointments. This is one that had been uh, before us and then tabled while we were waiting for feedback from the Housing Authority's Tenant Association. Um, they did post the opportunity to be the tenant representative on the Housing Authority for a period of time. And Mary is the only person who came forward and expressed an interest. So um, that that jives with both the original submission and what the tenants were um, hoping to see happen. So I'd ask for a motion to appoint Mary Wise as a regular member of the Housing Authority. Return expiring February 1st, 2026. I'll make a motion to appoint Mary uh, Wise on the housing authority for a uh, regular member for a term expiring February 1st, 2026. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. And we have a new appointment for the building commission. Mr. Sherry has expressed his willingness to serve. He submitted an application that's in your packet. Um, any questions? I'm sure he'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'd ask for a uh, motion to appoint him to the open position. I'll move to appoint Wayne Sherry as a regular member to the Building Commission for a term expiring August 1st, 2024. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Great. And then you need a <clears throat> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So, so carried. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank you. Um, okay, we're going to go on to Dr. Children um, and a discussion, and this also uh, will include Mr. Sauerhofer, I believe. Um, but there is a, a concept that I raised last week about um, doing an added appropriation for the HVC engineering work to be done on um, the, each of the three schools in town. Um, Dr. Tudor wasn't able to join us last week, and I wasn't able to speak comfortably on uh, what the grants that he had been to stated or required. Um, but as we talked about, um, one of the things that we did have a concern about and, and still remains a concern is the quick turnaround between the grant announcement and the need for submission of a fully vetted plan. Um, that fully vetted plan required also uh, the engineering and the architecture for the HVAC systems on the roof, which is not something you can do in eight or ten it's eight or ten months. Um, um, so I'm going to ask Dr. Tudrin to kind of explain a bit about what the project entails. Joe can talk to us a bit about uh, where we where we expect the cost to be, and um, we'll take it from there. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, good evening. Uh, appreciate uh, the flexibility as far as uh, participating uh, virtually. I apologize. I'm not uh, there in person. Um, so uh, basically, uh, the projects um, that we'd like to uh, consider at some point, and I say some point because uh, as uh, the first selectman indicated, uh, the timeline in which uh, the grants came out just wasn't uh, feasible. And um, we're not alone um, in that boat. I can tell you um, there's not one surrounding town that I'm aware of as far as our school district and uh, municipality uh, that was able to apply um, for the grant under the conditions and timeline uh, that was put out. Um, uh, we have participated in a webinar in which we believe that there will be um, a second and third round of uh, grant opportunities with this. And just to add, what makes this uh, grant uh, somewhat unique is uh, typically uh, new construction um, reimbursement rates do not include HVAC. Um, so this is why um, like this grant that the governor has put out is unique in that case. Uh, but when we did look at the criteria as first selectman had indicated or has indicated, um, 
uh, we basically don't have the designs that would allow us uh, to um, essentially uh, put forward uh, projects. Uh, so the projects we want to um, uh, get more information and hopefully uh, put forward in the future are um, HVAC units that would essentially um, provide um, uh, air conditioning to our classrooms and our buildings in addition to our gyms and also provide the opportunity to recirculate fresh air into the classrooms and also um, generate an additional heat source. So Patrick, oh, I'm sorry, just give me one second. I'm gonna mute others. Okay, keep going. Um, so I guess maybe I'll stop there. I mean, is there any specific questions? I mean, certainly I can go into additional um, details uh, with the grant that's out right now um, or the criteria. Well, so I'll just um, add a little bit of color to, to what you said. I, I spoke to the governor directly about this and he did indicate that there would be another round coming, um, but we, we won't be eligible for that one either if we don't have the plans in place to do this. That is a key piece of the application process. Um, so uh, Joe, have you been able to get uh, an estimate as to what the uh, engineering would be on each of those projects or each of those buildings? So I spoke to our PM that we hired. Well, we haven't signed a contract yet, but we talked to today. And I also reached out to the architect that helped us do the community center. And there, they're both hesitant to give us an exact price, but um, I would say we have to be in the range of between two and three hundred thousand, three and four hundred thousand dollars, at least a hundred and between a hundred and one hundred twenty thousand dollars a building. Now we're talking about engineering, and I mean it could be less on the high school because we already have HVAC here on the. Someone keeps on themselves. Yeah. Uh, we already have HVAC units on some of the areas at the high school. On all the new modulars, I already have HVAC with fresh air. And so this is a really rough estimate. Until we hire an architect, we're not going to, and until they come out and assess, I mean, the, the high school is about 130,000 square feet. And then the middle school is about 75,000. And the elementary school is about 80,000. But keep in mind, two of the big wings are done, but nothing else is on the elementary school. Same thing with the high school, the, the auditorium, the gym, the is the new part, the science wing, I would call it, I call it new because it wasn't there when I was there. You're talking about the S wing or the D wing? I don't know. It, it, it's all the, the old science wing. If it's, uh... and you know, if it's uh like if uh, the wing that's uh like adjacent to uh the gym no the wing no that's the that's the old business wing i know that's got air right? yeah that's the only wing that has air in the high school so the 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 addition that was put on behind the uh the b wing in the old corner with, yeah the old corner behind the, the big room that doesn't have air conditioning no, I think is it the guidance wing you're referencing? No, oh, it's got the one with the big dome right next to the softball or the softball field in the batting cage. No, there's uh so there's no air down yeah. uh, by that area so that you're maybe referencing. That school's done, the high school, maybe you know, maybe a quarter of the elementary school, because we've got the cafeteria, we've got the modulars on both sides. Uh we did put some heat pump systems in a couple of the offices, uh, the principal's office going when we did some Alliance grant stuff. It's a heavy number, I know, uh, but I, I certainly don't want to come back and tell you guys I need more. Uh, you know, we have enough money in place for the roofs, but again, we might be able to save some money in the roofs. And this is an estimate. This goes in an account, whatever we don't use, you know, gets reallocated wherever. So it's, it's parking some money there, a very safe number, you know, and, and it's, you know, I, it's, I don't see them coming in from each building for more than a hundred thousand each. You don't see it being more than, more than that, but, you know, I mean, that's my best guess. And, you know, it, it's easier for me to guess on stuff that I know about, but 
there's design factors here, there's electrical factors here, you know, there, there's structural factors, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be built into this. And on top of this, we don't want to do anything in the high school until we put a new roof on. And these are, um, to that point, the, the HVAC units rest on the roof. Yeah, I would recommend they all go up on the roof to keep them out of the ground. And, you know, there may, you know, the heat pumps work good, but the difference with the heat pumps, the systems that I know and the, the systems we've used in the town, you also have to put in a fresh air system. Like in this building, there's a fresh air system also added in. If you go with HVAC, they're solid units like you see on the top of the school across the street. That's what we have at the P police station. You know, but in, in order to do that, you got to put the duct work in. But, you know, they're, they're long, straight roofs. They're wings. You know, they're, they're, you know, we're not talking there's a lot of bends. They'll, my estimation is they'll be able to run a trunk line right down the center on the roof, and we'll insulate that trunk line, and we'll be able to do it. So with, given that the roof on the middle school is, is very new, mm -hmm. does that at least, is there the possibility that that drops the engineering costs down on that building? It all, or are we engineering two different things? We're engineering two different things. I mean, we know what's there. We know it's a solid roof. We know we don't have to get into any structural, you know, and we know we have a good roof. That would probably be the first school we start because we can literally just start there. You know, I... But at the end of the day, we can't even submit for the grants unless we have the engineering done. So the point, the, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. I spoke to uh, the PM, and he is, there are actually three schools that he's handling is Farmington, Oxford, Oxford, Brantford, oh, and Norwalk. They already had their stuff together. They're the only ones that are going, that he knows of, that are going for this December 1st. So what's this next round coming up? Nobody knows. Yeah, they don't. They don't know yet. But well, it's, but it's, it's like a year, two years. Uh, oh, it'll know. be annual. at least annual. It might be in the spring. So I think my one of the other things I think we need to think about is we have in most of the schools single pane, crappy windows, and on the CIP list we have, you know, a, an entry there to to take care of that. I mean. It's, to me, it doesn't seem like really smart to do the HVAC, but not do the windows, not very efficient. So do we move that, those projects up in the priority list in the CIP as these, you know, and, and I'm talking, you know, obviously a year or two is probably out before new construction happens, but, but like, it doesn't make sense to put HVAC in with the old windows. I mean, not that you wouldn't, but like, you don't want to be running those systems without better windows uh, for very long because we're going to be spending or they're going to be spending a ton of money in electricity and whatnot to you know for the lack of efficiency of those of those windows you know i remember dr king was pretty good about wrangling alliance grants for projects like that so they did at the elementary school at least some uh, uh, window treatments and, and remediation uh, the, the asbestos glue and all that. Um, I remember that, but we still have like like in Broadbrook. I'm more most familiar with, but it's all you know single pane, like 1950s windows. Really do need to put you know energy efficient windows in if we're going to do HVAC. Right, middle school is the same way. Yeah. Yeah, I, and um, just to go back to uh, Dr. Kane, I believe she used the Lions Grant. Um, it's my understanding. I mean, I'm on, just being in my second year. Um, but the Lions Capital Grant, um, who I've been informed, is available uh, every other year or every two years. Um, so it should be coming up around this uh, summer or spring. The last time we got it, it was about approximately two hundred and fifty thousand, um, just to put a uh, a price tag and how often that grant comes around. Um, again, just going into my second year, um, you know, I uh, um, it's something that's on my radar. Um, anticipating and certainly uh joe and myself have talked about connecting uh, uh should and when that comes available as well and but same thing as this you need architecture you need in, you need the engineer and, and that's all i'm bringing up is right. like you, like if we're going to do hvac we should definitely move the window stuff <laughs> on the priority list and get whatever needs to be done done with that you know make sure we're 
not too far. Yeah, and, and just to piggyback off of that, I mean, that's one of the things we run into is like the Lions Capital Grant's a perfect example. Um, you get notification of a uh, spring that like what the possible award is, and then you have to spend it um, by uh, August 30th. So you have a short window. So like certain projects are limited if you don't have like uh, um, as far as the work of us, uh, the scope of work to move forward. So sometimes you're limited as far as projects that you can put together in that that short of a time frame. Um, so something like this, like if you did have something together, it allows you to move quicker on some projects that you maybe prefer to prioritize. So that, that gets us to the question of where's the money going to come from? Well, the the FY22 numbers are closed out and the uh, Board of Ed has returned. Patrick, is it 518,000? Uh, correct. Okay, so if if we know that we need somewhere between three and 400,000 to do the engineering for the, these two, these projects on each of the three schools, uh, at least to start, we also know that there was money that was appropriated for education that has been returned that wouldn't even be equal to the total amount that they returned here. So I would be comfortable basically turning around and returning the money towards um, a project that benefits the, the school buildings. Is that where we voted to put the money to begin? Yeah. Um, Patrick, real quick. Um, HBA system, um, during the pandemic, there was a lot of uh, concern by parents throughout the nation um, that the air quality was very poor. Does this require, um, this grant require anything additional other than a normal EPA system to meet those standards that they were supposed to be putting in place for air quality within the schools? Um, I don't know if I understand the, the question. question. Um, are you at? I mean, uh, if, if the grant requires anything specific, like for example, I'm, um, COVID and the concern in fact there in the COVID and the circulation of the air, if there's something that's additionally required by them in order to obtain the grant. Um, not that not that I've read. I mean, it has to, I mean, it, it does have to improve air quality. Um, like it, like I'm looking at right here, it's to install, replace, upgrade heating, ventilation, or air conditioning. Um, uh, certainly, I you know, um, there is an application process. Um, so they will be looking at specific criteria. I'm, um, I'm sure like like any type of grant, there's like a scoring mechanism to it. So if you have something that's also improving the air quality, um, you know, that improves your chances of getting the grant um, approved. But nothing specifically says it has to do that. Um, but I'm sure it's one of the look for. So this grant is strictly for air quality, or is it also going to... Um, do anything for the heat issue that people were complaining. Um, no, it, it, um, you can utilize it to upgrade heating. So it's a uh, again, it's it can be used to for installation, replacement, upgrading, and that includes both heating and air conditioning as well as van, uh, ventilation. Um, but it doesn't say it has to be all those. It's like an and or. Okay, and then one question for Joe: the current. Um, upgrades that were done already to the schools? Will the new system, if approved, um, will they tie in together or will they be separate? You talking about the boiler? Um, over at the middle school, you said there were no things are put on the roof? Yeah, uh, we, uh, we I mean, we had a few rooms that had some AC. So we yeah. had um, the health room, the computer room, the library. Um, uh, there was a... Uh, a small office area. Um, prior to that, I don't know if it was uh, um, uh, like within the last few years, obviously we've added uh, the auditorium and cafeteria um, at the middle school, but these would be independent units. Okay, that's, um, that's what I wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure we didn't waste money previously. So he answered my question. I just want to make sure that we're and, any and, and, and the upside that Dr. Trudger did mention is this is this will be backup for our boiler systems. Yep. I mean, the high school boiler was replaced 2006 between 2005 and 2007 was about about when it got finished in 2007. So, you know, I mean, you know, granted the middle school and we're having the well, we had an issue with 
a quarter or a, a third of the boiler in here across the street, yep. which does 90% of the school outside of the module. So th th there is a bonus here for us and, and you know, we can get the money. The upside here too is, is whatever we don't use, if it goes into like an engineering fund, yep. we can turn around and then we can go for the windows or the next project and, you know, vice versa. That's what you all want to do with that. But the bottom line, if we don't, if we don't uh, move forward with the engineering work, then we're going to lose grant money, um, which far will exceed the cost to be prepared when it comes through. So, mm -hmm. right, I'm good. Other questions or comments? What's your pleasure? I'll make a motion that we um, accept the proposal as presented uh, by utilizing the uh, refund of 518000 um in order to accomplish the engineering process. I just made it up. So, so that number might be a little high. <laughs> Not to exceed um, the recommended 300000 Is that what it was? 300000 I would. I would just stay safe and say 400,000 just to be safe. And I'll amend that to 400,000. Is there a second? Second. Made and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Dr. Tudor. And appreciate you uh, tuning in. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Appreciate the flexibility again. Uh, thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Mr. Sauerhoff. Yeah, you're up next in the batting order. Um, so you guys all recall that we, we talked about uh, the best way moving forward to make sure we're disposing of town property uh, or town assets rather. So uh, Joe brought us his, his inventory that he wanted to dispose of. And he's got a um, update as to where that stands as well as a policy moving forward that we can conceive of the adopts. So much. So here is, and my apologies, last minute, but uh, it's been a little hectic. It is a draft. Uh, and if you have any questions on it, we can go over it this time or next time. As far as what we did a couple of weeks ago, you'll be happy to know, and I was ecstatic to know that we sold all of everything we were selling. Obviously, at the price we set, it was non-negotiable, but the air conditioners are still sitting on the air conditioning units. I don't know if uh, well, it's going to snow. Well, th th that didn't help, so I don't know if we just wait and, you know, maybe we have a second round in the spring. Maybe, you know, I mean, we're not asking a lot of money for them. If you want me to reduce the price, I, you know, I mean, $200 for an air conditioner, I think, Probably we'll sell in the spring or closer to the summer. We can just wait. That being said, we did raise $68,000. That will very much offset the price of our new backhoe that I got the price for today. Um, that plus the, um, the savings on the loader leaves me about $30,000 shy, but I think once I sell the backhoe we have, we'll pretty much own the backhoe for nothing. But we'll have a brand new piece of equipment that will last us another, that one lasted us 20 years for no cost. No out-of-pocket cost, I guess. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, it worked out very well. Uh, we did run into a little glitch on the, the titles. We don't have titles, we have certificate of origins. We didn't fill out the right paperwork, but we're working through that with people who bought the vehicles. And everybody who bought it understood it. And I actually just received uh, another car from the police station that I want to do a little market research, but I'm going to come back to you maybe in another meeting or two and put that out there. People, people like this stuff. I'm amazed because some of it I was just going to recycle. <laughs> Well, I'm amazed how quickly it all went. Because I called the next morning after I gave one day, and then I called the next morning, and what I wanted was already sold. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the stuff amazingly, you know what? Uh, it, it pains me to say this, but 
sometimes Facebook is a very good tool. Sometimes, very small amount of times. But, but it worked out very well for us. We put it out there. Um, people are still reaching out to see if we have anything. So I think we've created a nice buzz where, you know, we're, we'll, we'll basically just, you know, not sit on some of the stuff. I mean, a couple of the cars we've been sitting on for over a year. And, you know, we can get right out of it, put it right back in our fund and be able to fund stuff. Yeah. And, you know, move on. So that's uh, the disposition of the last list of assets that, that we brought forward, I think, two meetings ago. Yes. Um, and uh, we have a draft of the um, asset disposal policy. Um, you guys have any any comments to incorporate into that? We'd welcome them. Um, we can move forward with this tonight. You guys can look it over over the next couple of weeks and can put it on the agenda for the first. Is that what you want to do? So hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll bring it back on the first, and um, uh, we'll either adopt any comments or we'll set it in place. All right. Thanks, everybody. Make that vote. You're welcome. Okay, where am I? So, the Greater Together Community Fund Advisory Committee has made another round of awards. Um, and one of the recipients is the American Legion, a condition of them being able to accept funding from the, the um, advisory committee is that they need to have a financial agent, a fiduciary agent. We've done this for other groups in the past. Probably will not be the only request that we get this cycle. Um, it is the only one external to an existing board commission that I'm aware of at this point in time. Um, but they approached us and wanted to know if we would be willing to be their, their uh, fiduciary agent so that they could accept the grant and work on their roof project. We've done this a bunch of, well, uh, we've done this several times in the past, but I wanted to bring it to you guys so you could uh, take a look at it and let me know if you're comfortable doing that or not. And then that apply to OBG grant. They was not big. I don't have a problem. We've done it in the past on precedent and stuff, so to be consistent, I don't have a problem. Works. I have a motion. The town act is the, the financial agent or fiduciary agent for the uh, American Her American Legion to receive the community East Windsor Greater Together Community Fund funds. Make a motion that we um, authorize the approval of the town to act as fiduciary for the Five thousand dollar grant to be awarded to the American Legion uh, from the East Windsor Greater Together Community Fund Advisory Committee. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I would ask that we table agenda item nine D until after executive session. Will we table agenda item 90 until after executive session? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, we did 9E. We're on to 9F, which is tax refunds. I move to approve the tax refunds totaling $1,843.77. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Uh, okay, so speaking of grants, the East Windsor Arts and Culture Committee has received a grant from the Department of Economic and Community Development. Uh, it is called, it's called, I don't have the document. This is the, just the contract. Um, it's a supporting arts grant. It's the, the State of Connecticut Supporting Arts Grant. It's $1,000. It's just for operational costs for or operational expenses incurred by the um, uh, East Windsor Arts and Culture Commission 
Um, but because it's receiving town money, I need authority from you guys to sign acceptance from the state. I'll make a motion that we accept that, that again, whatever he said. The supporting yeah. arts. The supporting the 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 arts. Somebody, um, the supporting art. Somebody want to finish that, please? The supporting arts grant from the Department of Economic and Community Development. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, it is that time of year again where we need to start talking about the parameters that we're going to ask boards, commissions, departments. Uh, what they would like to see, or, or what we would like to see them present to us in terms of their budget submissions. Um, at the board of finance meeting last night, I talked to that board about what I see as some of the particular uh, struggles we will have this year. And it's going to be kind of a, a convergence of, of really trying events. We're dealing with uh, 40 year high inflation, we're dealing with interest rates that are not far behind. Um, and we're also dealing with a rebound at a point in time when the housing market has been at extreme highs over the last five years. As I said to the Board of Finance last night, and what will we'll be coming before our board on December 1st, is we're going to have to have a pretty um, creative conversation around how we're going to tackle rebound and what our options are. Um, but as we're required by charter to put our budget guidelines out by December 1st, so um, I need to poll you guys without the benefit of having that information as to where you see uh, the town budget going in the next fiscal year and what you want those parameters to represent in the budget. Part. The Board of Finance's representation, Charlie was at the meeting, he can back me up here. Um, they were basically saying uh, status quo, uh, you know, basically a, a nothing new approach. Um, I personally think that's a little too. Uh, too rosy. I think it's going to be a more difficult year than that. Um, but I throw it to you guys so that I can hear what you have to say, and then I'll put a draft of the letter together so that we can vote on it in our meeting on the first. Um, I think this point did, in my opinion, I think this point did a great job um, last year's budget to make sure that um, we did it in a way um, that. Uh, the business and the uh, residents of the town um, came through with basically a zero base budget um, last year, no tax increase. I know I just got a statement from my bank um, saying that because of um, the escrow account um, been overpaid into because of the tax line, um, they refunded me um, money. Um, so I know my went down, may not be applicable by everybody else, but I think we did that if I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, because we knew there might be a problem moving forward. Some towns acted differently than we did. We acted on the side of caution to make sure that we knew because when the new valve was coming, we, you always know when the new valve there's going to be some um, influx of something um, that's going to affect certain people. Um, so I think we're in a good spot moving forward. I don't think we're in a position where you can say zero base because we all, all know with inflation, the cost of anything is going up. So even if we don't purchase a pencil, everything's going to cost you more uh, in order to operate the town. So I don't think a zero base budget will do the town any good. We're far behind now in growth in this town. We're far behind in improvements. Um, as you alluded to earlier, our windows are at the schools are very much outdated. Um, we put projects and we move them forward and we move them forward and we never accomplish things that need to be done. But recognizing that we have to err on the side of good judgment, we don't wanna waste funding because we know some families are gonna struggle moving forward. Oil's gone up, gas gone up, and all that. you guys, I don't have to repeat that, you guys all know that. But I don't think with the contractual increases and raises for people that work in town, um, we can't do anything with that 2% hold that we have in the town charter. It's going to cost something with a rebound going forward. Um, but I don't think we could say we're going to do a zero base budget this year. I don't think that's realistic, and I don't think that's fair to tell that to the community. So that's my opinion. 
No, I was going to say we need to go with a zero-based budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, I guess when I say zero-based budget, I thought, I'm thinking the philosophy is we're not assuming that anything's staying that was there last time, right? I mean, we do have fixed cost, like you're saying, you know, that's obviously going to be the starting point for everybody's budget, but I think we need to, you know, everybody needs to look at, you know, not just making an assumption because we had it last year, we have it this year. <clears throat> You know, maybe we need it, but I think we have to start with that philosophy. I'm, I'm not saying buying anything new. I'm just saying we have one of everybody in town. We have one town clerk. We have one assessor. We have one that we can't lay them off. Uh, so, and they got contracts, so it's going to cost money. That's what I'm referring to. Those are fixed costs that we have no sure, control yeah. of. They're classified with your city. It's a fixed cost we have no control of. Um, insurance we have no control of. Uh, things that are required by the uh, police department and the fire department that require that you have um, different tests done and different shots taken. We have no control over what that cost is. We have no control over the gas um, that's coming in. Who knows what gas going to cost? Who knows what the oil is going to cost? Those are fixed costs that we have no control over, and we know they're going to go up. Um, so are you, are, are you saying... Okay. You're saying uh, contractual contractual increases only. I'm, I'm not saying contractual increases only. I'm saying that we have to be smart enough to know that there's going to be costs that are going to go up that we right now are blind by it, but we know it's going to go up. That all has to be factored in before you can make a decision to say zero. Where are you going to take those added expenses? Where are we going to take it from? And who's going to be harmed by it? You know, I don't have a problem saying, okay, that 50 year old piece of equipment you have, you're going to keep that 50 year old equipment and you're going to use it for another five years. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but I have a problem if we sell ourselves too short to the public because the last thing you want um, next year is you come up and say, we need an added appropriation for this and we need an added appropriation for that um, because we missed calculating. There's going to be some error because you don't know what's going to happen out there. And before all we know, who shelves could be empty next month? Um, I just went to a restaurant today and they said they can't even get lettuce. You know, that's sad. Um, so it's going to be a trying year, especially with this rebound, because we don't know what effect it's going to have yet. Um, so with that and everything else. You didn't mention um, insurance, but I'm, I think we're expecting a double digit increase. I, I'm skeptical about that until I really see any of the numbers because the broker that, that we have on contract missed the mark so badly last year that until we actually get the numbers from the state, I, I can't. Generally out there though, it is. Yeah, I mean, it, last year they told us between um, zero and 5%, but I expect that it's going to be zero. So budget five and it'll be in good shape. And then it came in at 10 and a half. So they lost on like weather band numbers kind of bad. Um, and we don't, Patrick and I don't even have a meeting set up with the insurance carrier until mid December anyway. Yeah, it's kind of hard right now to sit here and say, what should we do? We haven't seen any numbers. Well, you, know, you know, not having given Sarah and Charlie an opportunity yet. I mean, you pegged inflation on the money last year. You, you were the only one, or at least the first one, that I heard saying that was going to be a problem, that was going to be a problem. And it was way before it was a problem. So kind of hoping the Oracle of Rye Street has some good news on the tour system. <laughs> Possible recession. Okay. <laughs> what do you guys think? Um, I mean, I agree that with Marie that she said we've made a lot of progress and we don't want to halt that. And but I think we really need to be cautious. I think we need to also look at a lot of departments are budgeting for things and returning a lot of money back to the town. I think we need to ask the departments how much money did you return last year? What and if they aren't using you know, we're taxing people and they're not using what is in their budget, then we need to cut it this year if they have been, if they have a track record of not using it for the past few years. Um, I'm kind of on board with just fixed costs. Um, and if there is a program that they budgeted for that they're not utilizing, then we have to be open to possibly cutting it. Um, but I mean, I also at the same point agree that we've, made a lot of progress where we're moving forward in town and that hasn't happened for many years and which we need to be cautious as to how we do that going forward. Um, 
it's kind of where I am. Sure. So I agree a lot with what's been said, and I have more questions than I have opinion on what we should do. And <laughs> you're not alone. Yeah. You're <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> Number one, if if evals have gone up so so much and so substantially, doesn't that in turn increase our grand list? Yes. The same way. So that in turn should decrease our mill rate to yes. our taxpayers. That is what we're having. Okay, so yes, your house value went up, but potentially your mill rate should also go down. Therefore, shouldn't there be some middle findings there as far as money to the tax or bill to the taxpayer, I should say? Yes, there, there, typically there is, and there will be in this case too. Um, at our meeting on December 1st, the um, contractor that we actually did, the representative from Vision, will be here to talk to us about the rebound. So you can ask all of those very good questions and you'll get a, an educated answer on them right then and there on the spot. Um, I think the answer is going to be that the doubles in the details. There's nuance in all of that. Um, but those are very good points and they're, they're very worth discussing when we get together again in two weeks. And then my other big question is, is how much control do we have over the rebound as far as what, what that does and you know what the town either benefits or doesn't benefit from them. What control do we have? In, you know, what they've said. You know, if a house is said to be worth a certain amount, what, what, is, what can we do to change that? Very little, uh, okay. but not nothing. There, there are some things we could consider the, the prospects of phasing. We could consider the, the prospect of asking the legislature to allow us to defer, um, both of which are going to have to be part of the conversation. Um, but you can get, again, we can get some, really, I'll make this the major part of our meeting on the first, so that we're digging in on um, real-time information from people who are trained professionals. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I understand that we have, you know, obviously the price of fuel, heat, electricity, Eversource just announced today they're going to try and do a 48% rate of take. Um, whether that goes through, we'll see, but we got to look at that as well. You know, electricity is already up, it's looking like it's going to be up even more. Um, so we're going to be faced with those. Obviously, contractual issues, insurance, you know, all those things are going to hit us. And electric won't hit us. Electric will hit our constituents, but it won't hit the town budget because we've got a four-year contract that we're in year one. Okay. Um, but nonetheless, you know, it's it's a factor and um, okay. which four months. Okay. Well, it's multi year. Yes. We're in, long short words, we're near one. Yeah. But, but at any rate, it, you know, people are all going to feel the pinch. So to go up on their taxes is going to, you know, obviously people aren't going to like that as well. I mean, it's, it's already a pressure, I know, for a lot of people. So just with the price of heating, you know, food and, and gasoline. So I, yeah, I think Sarah's right, you know. If you've got a track record of giving us an inflated budget and you're not spending it, you're going to see, you should see some serious cuts and projects or new things or, um, you know, pet projects that we're going to have to, you know, put the foot down on those things as well. But again, I, I do agree. We've made a lot of progress, a lot of good things have happened. In East Windsor in the last four or five years, and it would be great for that to continue and move on. Um, you know, certainly, the effects of what this board has done are still to come in you know in the future. But if we put good budget forward this year, then that can continue, you know, even farther, so even past this, if possible. And I'd like to see. On the email, going back to your question, because I misunderstood what you were driving at. I, I thought you were asking on the email is something we could do if we don't agree with it. Do um, you think because of the economy and the way it is right now, that putting that forward just the way it is, um, or should we be lobbying um, the powers in the state of the capital saying, um, yes, it's a requirement every 10 years, but because of 
the economy and how bad it is right now, um, can that be postponed until two years down the road or a year down the road? Um, that can be done through what's called a special act. So there's um, there is a public act and there's a, a special act. There are two different types of legislation. Special act can create uh, town by town or region by region or, or specific carve outs that exempt municipalities from certain conditions. Um, there was a bill last year that allowed for certain municipalities, I think there were four of them, um, to delay reval as a result of the, what is effectively the COVID economy and the housing boom. Um, so that is something that you know we will be talking about requesting. Okay. Um, and it's going to, you know, I mean, once we have all of the information, and I don't have it yet, once we have all of the information, then you guys will have to be a very active participant in those discussions. So what I'm hearing is we're, we're sympathetic to fixed costs. We're not excited about new ideas. And if there have been areas that have been, or budget lines that have been returned in the past, we'd want to know about those because they're going to be revisited pretty aggressively this cycle. Is that a fair mm -hmm. encapsulation of the comments? Yes. yes. Okay. That is very helpful. That is <laughs> not <laughs> going to be helpful. not been last year. <laughs> okay, so um just one more thing while it's fresh in my mind. When you were equating to um the no rate versus the tax rate, mm -hmm. you gotta take it one step further. We've been fortunate. Um our tax collector was able to collect taxes this year, which I'm very surprised we've got over what was a 96% um tax. Uh, collection. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we can count on that um, next year. So that's something that I would take under consideration. Um, sure. Because we know part of our population um, is under a certain income level. Um, and I'm sure if we're suffering, businesses are going to start suffering. Um, so there's going to be lots of jobs for those that are willing to work. Um, so we have to take that all under consideration, I think. That's actually what the Fed is aiming for, is unemployment. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your feedback. I, I do appreciate it. Um, so like those comments and reports. I don't have very much um, this time because we met just last week and Friday was a holiday. Um, but I want to start off by offering my thanks to the folks in our community who have made charitable donations for the Thanksgiving turkeys and gift card drive that we do each year. Through your generosity, this year we were able to provide for all of the needy families on our list using only private donations. We're still looking for sponsors for our Sponsor a Child holiday program with about 20 kids still in the sponsorship. So if you're interested, please call Social Services at 623-2430. On Tuesday, a recount was conducted on question two from last week's election due to the closeness of the outcome. Question two would have authorized the town to move forward with a renovation and expansion of the Scout Hall building to be repurposed as the town's multi-generational community center. After the recount was concluded, the final margin showed that the question uh, was, was defeated by a margin of 23 votes out of nearly 4,000 cast. Tonight, the Board of Selectmen recognized Mr. Arts, uh, Mr. Kyle Arts for the good work he's done through raising funds for cancer charities. Um, as I said earlier, he's a local eighth grader who's raised over $8,000 through October Saves, top fundraiser in Connecticut fifth highest fundraiser in the country and personally responsible for 1.5% of what was raised for that organization internationally. Um, Saturday uh, at 10 in the morning, the town will officially rename the park alongside the Scantic River at the base of Cemetery Road and Woolen Road in honor of Master Sergeant Richard Sherman. Mr. Sherman is an original member of the town's American Heritage River Commission and has been the steward of the Scantic River for more than two decades. All are welcome to attend the commemoration. Finally, I want to extend our most heartfelt congratulations to our own Samantha Sherritt, uh, who is our recreation lead in our Parks and Rec Department. Sam was recognized by her peers around the state as the Connecticut Recreation and Parks Association's R. Peter Ledger Young Professional Award winner. Uh, Sam will be honored at the CRPA annual meeting on Tuesday. I thank her for her continued dedication to our Parks and Recreation programs here in town. Maureen, what do you have? I have absolutely nothing. Uh, I had a part of a meeting meeting last night um, that I lost track of the time. I saw this stove that was been in my dining room for 
a little over a week and a half. Um, and if it's too late to go to the report of the report, maybe so I have more. That's one thing that I believe them doing something for it. But um, um, the turnout, um, just because you elaborated, it's not a liaison report, but since I have a minute. Um, the election turnout um, was good this year. Um, we very pleased. Um, the votes were close. We did the recount, um, which if I never have to do recounts again in my lifetime, um, it's fine by me. Um, but cooperation from everybody on that recount um, was phenomenal. So publicly, I'll thank all those people that came in the last minute because we had a short period of time to get things done. Um, we very much appreciate it. Um, you know, it'll probably take a month for my body to be covered, but um, we'll get it. Um, Miss Sadie made, made an appearance at the uh, housing authority last night. Yes, I agree. Yep. Sadie went to that one. Elliot came in for a bunch of times. A thousand kids were everywhere. The only thing I want to clarify, though, on the um, uh, voting um, on the new form of communication, which I don't agree with, so I don't respond. Um, somebody commented that. Uh, Deputy First Selectman Marie de Sousa signed, uh, the Deputy First Selectman, no name, um, signed um, the paperwork um, for the state um, to verify the voting. Um, the Deputy First Select person, who was myself, did not sign it under that capacity. I signed it under the capacity of head moderator um, hired by the Register of Voters to do that function. So it's head moderator, not, so I want to make sure that's clear. Um, that people get the right information. It was under head moderator. Um, so it does make a difference. Sarah. Okay, I did have a Parks and Recreation Commission meeting on Monday night. There are a lot of upcoming events being put on by Parks and Rec throughout the holiday season. The North Pole Connect with Calls from Santa will be on December 14th. The Torchlight Parade will be held on December 17th at 5.30 p.m. with activities following at the Broadbrook Fire Department. And there will also be an open skate at Enfield Twin Rinks on December 28th. There's also a Santa's mailbox outside of the Broadbrook Fire Department where children in third and fourth grade can write letters to Santa and they will receive a response. After seven years, the Panther Plunge will be back on February 18th, 2023 and the event will benefit the East Windsor Fuel Bank. If you wish to sponsor this event, please reach out to Samantha Sherritt at 860-627-6662, or she can also be emailed for more information. The Department of Public Works has begun winterizing the parks, including the dog park, so attendees must bring their own water at this time. Park Director Melissa Maltesi gave a seasonal review, which included a three-year comparison of East Windsor Park. Total revenue this year was back to pre-COVID standards. Um, gate receipts, pavilion rentals, and snack bar receipts were higher this year over the past three years. Total revenue generated was $33,965.78. And there were 31 pavilion rentals and 15 of those were from residents this season. After school programs are back up and running and functioning like they did pre-COVID, job applications for summer employment will be going online this year. And CPR training will be in-house um, this year, which can also be an income generator as this will eventually be offered to the public. You remember we had included that training in our budget. Um, and three potential playground designs for the ADA compliant playground at East Windsor Park were distributed amongst the commissioners. I do have those here if any of the board members would like to see. And just wishing you all and your families a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Thank you. Charlie. Yes. Uh, November 7th, I attended the Royals Point Fire Commission meeting. Uh, in that meeting, the board approved the new bid contract procedure. Um, and also approved a big contract for snow removal for the year. Uh, the fire marshal reported 24 inspections being completed on the warehouse point side of town, and the department chief reported 63 calls for service during the month of October. Uh, he also reported that the administrative building is near completion, and they hope to have a final inspection 
around the end of November with a moving date of uh, beginning of December. On November 16th, last night, I attended the Board of Finance meeting. A lot of this week, we already attended this meeting. Uh, board heard and made a transfer request that had already been presented and moved forward by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, this request was to cover replacement of in dash police car cameras and body cams. Uh, the current ones the police department is, are using are reaching their expiration, and a grant is currently available that would lead to about uh, $30,000 to $35,000 um, savings. Uh, also in that meeting, the first selectman requested feedback on letters like we just talked about for uh, budget parameters. And um, let's see what else happened in that meeting. Tax collections right on schedule in good standing, 48.6% or 21 million in revenue has been already collected. And the Board of Ed reports um, all info needed was submitted for the audit and the return of 518. Um, from the budget year of uh, 21-22, which we kind of already designated a home for. Uh, upcoming, the annual Suffolk Cruiser event is happening November 26th at 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thank you, sir. Selectman Baker. Yes, sir. Uh, Selectman Baker, we only had one meeting uh, since our last meeting that I was unable to attend, so I do not have a report. Okay. Um, we're on to public participation. This is the public's second opportunity to address members of the Board of Selectmen. I'll first start with people who are here in the room and then turn to anybody who's with us online. If there anybody in the room who would like to address the Board of Selectmen, please state your name and address. Anybody online who would like to address the Board of Selectmen? Okay. We will have a brief executive session uh, to include the five of us. Um, we will come out of executive session and take up agenda item 9D. Uh, can I have a motion to go into executive session? Will we go to executive session at 8.13. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in executive session at 8.13 p.m. It is 8.38, we're out of executive session. We're gonna to return to the call on the agenda and take up agenda item 9D, selection of an executive search firm for a chief of police. Um, per our town's bid policy, um, if the cost of a, a project is gonna be over $5,000, under $20,000, we can get three quotes. Um, I have reached out to three different firms who have expertise in executive recruitment. One of them is uh, Randy Frank Consulting, LLC. She's out of Wallingford, Connecticut and Louisville, Kentucky. One of them is Gov HR USA. They're out of the uh, greater Chicago area. And another one is Strategic Government Resources, which is, I believe, out of Texas. Um, Randy Frank Consulting came in at $22,000, which is over our uh, uh, threshold that would require a bid. Um, Gov HR USA came in at $23,500, which is again over that $20,000 number. And Strategic Government Resources came in at $19,900. Um, so we have, we have a qualifying uh, quote that is within the scope of the town's bid policy. We can either accept that or we can actually do a poll on our RFP. What's the pleasure of you? Yep. Um, I would make a motion that we would actually accept this quote. So I'll make a motion we accept the uh, quote from Strategic Government Resources and authorize the first selectman to sign the agreement for executive recruitment services for police chief between SGR and the town of East Windsor. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hear that tomorrow. Thank you, folks. With no further business to come before the board. A motion to adjourn would be in order. And we adjourn at eight forty p.m. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you. We are adjourned at eight forty p.m. Thank you.